So, um, I, well, I grew up in Paris and Vietnam, and I was, um, and I travelled extensively as a child. So I feel, and that was because of my father's work. So I feel really blessed that I was exposed to, you know, so many different cultures and countries. And everywhere we were posted, you know, my mother used to have to set up base, you know, every time. So, and she became a wonderful homemaker. You know, we were changing probably every three years. So, you know, every three years we'd arrive in a new place and set up home. So I guess from an early age that was where it was instilled. But I never, in a million years, sort of going to be an interior designer. So I sort of went about my life, went to Bristol, did languages, and then went to work for a publishing company called Dorling Kindersley for many years, and before setting up and retraining to do interior architecture and design, which I absolutely loved. And then I went on to work for with Taylor House, and sort of the rest is history. After, well, after Taylor House, I set up on my own, and it sort of flowed, you know, went from there, really. Well, it was just, as I get to say, you know, I was really fortunate with where I grew up and what I was exposed to. And I think you're very influenced that at an early age by what you see around you and what experiences you have. And I think they, they very much form what your future. And I think subconsciously that innate love of travel and innate love of architecture and cultures was, was founded at a very early age. I mean, I, I'm really lucky to do what I do um, because I love what I do. So, and to be recognized for what you do is really, that's that's the ultimate really. So I feel it's amazing when I get when, when I get awarded or when I get recognized or even when a client says thank you. It's mm -hmm. the best feeling because ultimately we're all here to, I mean, my job is to change the way people feel mm -hmm. through, through what I do and to give people a better a better way of living if I can. Mm -hmm. Gosh, there have been so many and for so many different reasons. But, you know, and sometimes it's the hardest ones that are actually not necessarily the favorite as you go as you go through this, but ultimately they're, they're the most challenging. And, you know, they're the ones ultimately that become the most rewarding. So I guess if I were to name, I mean, of course, Ferme de Moudon, my home in the mountains, had to be one of my favorites um, because I, I love it, uh, you know, the process was it was an amazing one to go through, unbelievably difficult, as everyone knows. But actually, the rewards were, were fantastic, and we've still got that home 20 years on today. And every day I go through that front door, I have to pinch myself and say, wow, this is home. This is what we created 20 years ago, and it's taken me on to be the chalet designer that I am today. So that was, I mean, in essence, that's turning fiction into reality. It's a James Bond fiction and it became reality. And that was, you know, at the time we were living in London and I had um, two small boys and we just needed a bolt hole, you know, to, get, to escape the, the frenzy of the city. And we found this 300 year old farmhouse. And this is the farmhouse that I was mentioning earlier that's in, that we converted almost 20 years ago now and was picked up on Grand Designs and was followed on Grand Designs. And it is, that is our very much our Alpine home today. And it's where we absolutely go for our downtime and we love it. We love it still. Well, I think, you know, it's neither one nor the other. I mean, whether you're designing an old building or whether it's a new design, it's actually, they're both just as important as, as each other. So with old built buildings, I feel that my role is probably more that of a curator. You're aiming to retain the soul of the building and work with the existing architectural details and yet create it into a modern, you know, bring it up to date and create a modern space for people to, to live in with all the modern conveniences that people expect. I think the challenge, if it's a new build, the challenge is the reverse. The challenge is actually to create a soul in a building <laughs> and to give it a sense of depth and warmth and to make it feel like a home rather than making it feel like a, a bland show home. Well, I think, I mean, lots of it comes from travel, of course, but I mean, you know, as with every project, you know, every project has a sense of place of, of where it is. So, you know, in chalets particularly, I'll take inspiration from, from the nature, the surroundings, the local materials. You know, it's very important to, to build within the vernacular of a building. You know, I can't just suddenly put a glass. Personally, I don't feel it's right to suddenly stick a glass box on the edge of a mountain. It's, you know, they were, there was a tradition and there's a tradition to be adhered to. To, but at the same time push the boundaries within that design process but I will always as I say work from nature and use local materials to, to give it that soul.
I, well, I guess it's classic, it's timeless, um, and it's contemporary. I think the importance of any design that you do is that it doesn't date. You know, it's an, it's an expensive investment at the best of times. So you actually you want something that is that, that is lasting. So I guess I pride myself on creating homes that are, you know, that maybe have been done 20 years ago, but are still as contemporary today um, as they were as they were then. Well, as I say, you know, there, there are so many, so, so many. And if, I mean, I guess, you know, as, you, as I said earlier, you know, the wonderful thing about my chalet is that, that I've appreciated all the more, especially with COVID, is it is at the bottom of a lane, it is set in the middle of nature. I think that that ability to escape into nature has just been, ha, ha, has just been invaluable um, during these COVID times. And many a client actually has, has escaped to their chalet during COVID oh. rather than staying in London. So. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any I don't think there's any one that I love more than any other. What I really get a kick out of is, you know, I'm really privileged to work in different architectural styles mm -hmm. built. and you know that's wonderful. So whether it's a chalet or it's a 19th century mm -hmm. house or it's a Georgian house here in London or a Victorian house, you know, it's it's lovely to have that flexibility and to have the different styles in which to, to work and to express my work. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say there's any there's any one style that I like any more yeah. than any other. Mm -hmm. and the process for all of them is the design process is still the same for, for all of them. I, I try, where possible, not to look back. You know, I think we all, we're always moving forward and, you know, we always learn, we're always learning from our mistakes and, or you, I mean, what, what I love about what I do is I'm continually pushing boundaries and I'm continually learning. And so I, I, I never, if you look back, you're going backwards. If you look forward, you're always moving forward. We've got lots, we've got lots, we're really lucky, we've got lots that we're working on currently in the pipeline. So we've got a fabulous, we're working on a couple of um, uh, chalets in Val d'Isère, which will sleep 40, okay. um, which are amazing and again, groundbreaking in their architectural design. Um, we're also working on a large family house here in London and we're doing a barn, a com barn conversion in Buckinghamshire. We're doing a Hampton style place down on the coast and we're doing several chalets across the Alps. So, you know, we've got mm. our, we've got our, our book, it's quite full which we're very lucky in the, because it's not easy quite a lot well, of on that. that's what i mean you know during these covid times you know we feel really blessed that actually we've got um we've got the work that we that we have got and it's such as from the years of industry i certainly do oh amazing so <laughs> I, i've been speaking from a very young age yeah. very Gosh, I'm a good skier um, mm -hmm. and I love skiing, but I probably draw the lines at couloirs. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, it's it's really important to understand how a chalet works as a skier, the practicalities of skiing, you know, where do you put your boots, where do you put your skis, your yeah. wet clothes, you know. So it's all about the flow of the space, but, you know, not only in not only in the winter, but also in the summer, because, you know, chalets are also just as wonderful, place, wonderful places to be in the summer as they are in the winter. So it's, um, it's important to understand the materials and how, you know, how a house breathes at altitude and all of that. So yeah, it, in Indispensable to, I think, to have had that knowledge and experience as a skier. So, um, well, that, again, there are lots and lots for different reasons. You know, I think, um, you know, I have to say, you know, our, our one little Lishi, what I love about it is the traditional farm, you know, it comes from a, it's got this heritage of being a traditional farming community and that's still very strong and very present. Um, but it's, you know, say Val d'Isère, for example, is is a one, also wonderful. It's wonderful because you're, you're it's isolated, it's altitude, it's, you really feel that you're at altitude when you're there. It's got a, a fabulous sort of social social scene too it's very for me that to party and it's a it's a it's a great ski domain as well but you know there are others i mean start Majeve, you know crans montana they're all lovely villages in their own you know in their own right and they've all got you know ski domains and walking domains which are wonderful but they're very short you know they're not because they're quite low and because they're south facing some of like crans montana south facing so you know the the winter season is a short one but they've all got their charm you know, they've all got some, each resort has got something different to, to offer. 
So uh, there's a story that um, that my mother continually tells me is that you know when I used to get left at the bottom of the of the piece by the to be looked after by this chair lift attendant left in my pram to be looked after the chair lift attendant while they went off skiing and one day she completely forgot me you know she was skiing all day and left me by the chair lift and I just think you know today that just would not you know that just would not have happened so whether it's um, whether it's a memory or whether it's just something that you know is so innate it, you know within me I feel feel as if I've been skiing since I was in that <laughs> um, I just, you know, I love the outdoor. You know, I love the outdoor life. I love, I love the freshness of the mountains. I love the feeling that it gives you of being in the mountains. I love that sensation of having had a hard day skiing on the piece and, and coming back home to, you know, a log fire and a cup of tea before you hit something harder. <laughs> it's, you know, it's just, it's just the most wonderful, wonderful, you know, way of living. It's, it's, it's a fabulous, fabulous sport. Gosh, so our last family trip was um, was Ethiopia, and that was, you know, that was just amazing. Love traveling in Ethiopia. <laughs> and so that's going to be a hard one to beat, but I've got my, where would I, I'd like to probably go to Jordan, is also <laughs> on, my, on one of my hit lists. You know, I mean, that's an amazing, oh, it's just got so much history, and it's, you know, Petra, I'd love to go and visit. And so I'm, I'm hoping that that will be the next one on my list. Thank you so much for like talking through all of them. It was it's been really nice to chat to you about all of those questions. Mm -hmm.